The makers of Chase and Sanborn Coffee, the superb blend you know is fresh, present the Chase and Sanborn Hour. And your host, Don Amici. <laughs> This is Don Amici inviting you to join all your friends in another Chase and Sanborn Hour. On our committee of welcome are Nelson Eddy, Dorothy Lamour, Robert Arm Brewster and the Chase and Sanborn Orchestra, and our fully acclimated travelers, Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy. Our honorary greeters are two very special guests, David Niven and Anita Louise. We hope that you will all enjoy our show and that throughout the week you will remain our friends as well as friends of Chase and Sanborn. Oh, I did it. I did it, doggone. I did it. I Charlie, did it. Charlie, what did you do, doggone? I'm guilty, I swear. I, I'm guilty. I clipped and so help me. I'm all down. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute now, Charlie. Why are you guilty and who did you clip? Uh, those, three those three guys I met on the way to the show because of what they said to me. Yeah, well, what, what did they say to you? Yes, they did. Uh, what, what they said, they said, is it hot enough for you? Uh, so I let them have it, both barrels. Oh, it's gruesome. Oh, it's gruesome, huh? Yeah, well, you were right, Charlie, you were right. And I knew we could count on you to break the heat wave in your inimitable way. <laughs> to the tune of brilliant fanfares and staccato drum beats, a mythical musical comedy queen reviews her proud palace guards, all bedecked and bespangled in glittering gold braid. From the light-hearted screen operetta, The Love Parade, Nelson Eddy sings The March of the Grenadiers. <laughs> Arms every man and obey the trumpet call. The call. If the word stand at arms, pick and span, let your queen be heard by all. Our hearts are aflame with the loyalty. Each one is the waiting heart call. Oh, how we stand. Along, singing a song of motherland. Marching along, marching along. Is steady in war, ready in love, living to serve no other land. Every uniform taking the hearts by storm. Who could be true as a grenade? Steady and strong, marching along, here is a scorn of deep. Loyal men, the Royal Grenadines! Grenadines, steady and strong, marching along, singing a song of motherland. Grenadines, steady in war, ready in love, living to serve no other land. Every uniform. Taking the hearts by storm Who could be true as a grenade When the mountaineers of North Carolina gather round of an evening with their banjos and their fiddles, they play and sing the songs their fathers and their grandfathers have played and sung before them. Such quaint old ballads as The Wedding of Miss Duck, which Nelson Eddy sings. In come the duck and drake, kitty alone, kitty alone. In come the duck and drake, kitty alone and I. In come the duck and drake with the custard and the cake. Rock 'em, care 'em, core 'em down, kitty alone and I. In come the bumblebee, kitty alone, kitty alone. 
in come the bumblebee, kitty all alone and I. In come the bumblebee with his fiddle on his knee. Rock him, care him, core him down, kitty all alone and I. In come the old black frog, kitty alone, kitty alone. In come the old black frog, kitty all alone and I. In come the old black frog. With his whiskey in his jug, rock 'em, carry 'em, car 'em, <laughs> kitty alone and I. In come the little wasp, kitty alone, kitty alone. In come the little wasp, kitty alone and I. In come the little wasp, inquiring where to put his hoss. Rock 'em, carry 'em, car 'em down, kitty alone and I. What shall the wedding supper be, kitty alone, kitty alone? What shall the wedding supper be, kitty alone? And I, what shall the wedding supper be? Two blue beans and a black-eyed pea. Rock 'em, care 'em, core 'em, down, kitty alone, and I. Miss Reddy, let me be the first to congratulate you on the wedding of Miss Duck. You liked it, Charlie? It was ducky.、Mm -hmm. I'm sure all the little goslings will be quacky about the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Charlie! You know, I always say,、uh, yes, Mister Bergen. How's your schoolwork getting along? My what work? Your schoolwork. School, school. Oh, oh, yes, yes, yes. School, yes. School has been open for the last two weeks, hasn't it? I guess it must be, yes, yes. <laughs> Because on Tuesday the principal gave a lecture about playing hooky. Oh, he did. Yes.、Mm -hmm. What did he say about it? Well, he wasn't in favor of it. Oh, he was. <laughs> and he looked right at me and he said,、uh, "If the shoe fits, put it on." See? Yes. Then I guess he did mean you. I don't think he could have because I had my shoes on. Oh, I see. <laughs> But really, Charlie, isn't it kind of nice being back in school again? Yeah. Yes, it is. I. I enjoyed shaking hands with all the old familiar faces. They're、yeah. <laughs> <laughs> skinny and stinky, and say my new history teacher ain't half bad either. No, you mean、uh, Miss Grace? Oh yeah, I guess you know her, don't you? Yes,、uh, yes, she is nice, isn't she? Yes. Yes.、Uh, did she tell you that we met at the parent teachers meeting? Oh、uh, yes, she did. Yes. Yes, and she talked about you too. Oh, she did. Yeah. Oh, what did she say about me? Well, she said yes. Yeah, kind of anxious, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Yes. Well, what did she say? Well, she said. She said. Yes.、Uh, she said. Yes, 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 yes. All right, all right. Now don't blame me. What you know? No, I know. <laughs> Now mind you, Bergen. These are not my words. You know. No. I'm only quoting. Yes, I know. What did she say?、Uh, you sure you can take it? Oh yes. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> well, what did she say? Come out with it. It's just all right.、Uh, I don't think I ought to tell you. Oh, now come on.、Uh. Well, I don't want to hurt you. You know. No. I know how sensitive you are. Well, I know. Well, what did she say? All right. Well.、Uh, oh, I don't think I did. Oh no. no. <laughs> Charlie. You, you, you. Charlie. They go to lap a lot. <laughs> I'll tell you, Charlie.、Uh, you tell me what you say, what she said about me, and I'll tell you what she said about you. Well, you tell me first. All right. Well, I talked to her about you. Uh huh. As a student. That's enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and she said,、uh, she said that you had a lot to learn. A lot to learn. Yeah. Uh huh. Now that's a funny coincidence, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> she said the same thing about you. <laughs> And you're no student, are you? No, I know. I know. <laughs> you know, I talked to Miss Kausoffer too. Oh yeah, you mean Picklepuss? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> And she complained that the honor system wasn't working out. Well, it's her own fault, the old buzzard.、Yeah. <laughs> Charlie. Yes. I would rather have you fail in schoolwork than cheat. You'd rather have me fail than cheat. That's right. Uh huh. You would. Yes, I would. Uh huh. Well, if that's what you want. I can guarantee your results. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But Charlie, why is it necessary to cheat in the first place? 
Why is it? Yes. Because she gave us an impossible question in the second place. She did? Yeah. Yes. I think you exaggerate. Exaggerate? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Why, when I looked for the answer in the back of the book, it said, we don't know either. Oh. <laughs> Well, that's ridiculous. You think that's ridiculous? Wait till you hear the question. Yeah. Well, what was it? Well, the question was if... Uh, it was, it just can't, there's no answer to it. Yeah. It was something like, if A takes a boat, yeah. how long will it take B to get there? Oh, that's impossible. Oh, <laughs> uh, there must be something more to it than that. Well, all right. I got it here in my pocket. Read it yourself. Go ahead, read it. Go ahead. All right, I will. Yes. Oh, yes, here it is. Yes. Well, let's see. Well, it says here... Uh, Two men take different boats to the same destination. You see? Yeah. That's even worse than I gave it to you. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. A's boat goes 400 miles a day. Uh-huh. Mr. B's boat only goes 200 miles a day. Yeah. If it takes A three days to reach his destination, uh -huh. how long will it take B? See? <laughs> Well, ain't that silly? Silly, yeah, well, no. I think that's a perfectly logical question. Now, what bothered you? Well, uh, the answer, mostly. Yeah. <laughs> well, now, uh, what more do you need to know in order to arrive at that answer? Well, for example, I don't even know what A's name is. Oh, I see. What's A's name? Well, they don't tell us that. No, that's the trouble, you see. No. Maybe he's, uh, maybe, well, they just don't have to give his name. No, they don't give it, no. <laughs> Well, go ahead, tell it. <laughs> Traveling incognito. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. No you sleeping up there at all. No, that's right. <laughs> now, what's the name of the boat? Well, now, that's immaterial. SS immaterial? I don't know. <laughs> uh, the boat's going incognito, too. Yes, that's right. Now, where's it going? Well, they don't tell us that either. That's it. They don't tell us that. They don't tell us this. They don't tell us nothing. Oh, yes, they do. If they don't tell us the name of the boat or the names of the men or where the boat's going, the least they could do is tell us the answer. Well, <laughs> well if they did that, there'd be no problem. Well, that's okay with me. Yes. <laughs> I still say, why don't they tell us where the boat's going? That's all I ask. That's all I ask. All right, if it will help you any, Charlie, let's say that the boat is going to Cuba. Cuba, yes. I've been to Cuba. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's say it's going to Africa. All right, then it's going to Africa. Good. Now we're getting someplace. I think it would be easier if I knew their real names, too, instead of A and B. See, that's what throws me. Oh, that throws me. Yes. <laughs> All right, then we'll call one Tom and the other Dick. All right. Yeah. Now, what about Harry? Well, <laughs> well, he's not in the problem. Oh, he missed a boat, huh? Yeah, he missed a boat. <laughs> Poor Harry. He so enjoys ocean travel, too. Now, don't you see, Charlie? No, I don't. No. A is to four. Yeah. As B is to two. Uh-huh. Now, let's use X as a symbol. A what? X. As a what? As a symbol. Oh. Who's X? A stowaway? No, 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 no. <laughs> no. X represents the number of days it takes B's boat to get to the destination. Now, what is X? Huh? What is X? What is X? Yeah. You mean how much are eggs? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, no. Well, now, we'll leave X out. Yeah, X it out, yeah, sure. <laughs> now, it takes A three days. Uh-huh. How long will it take B? All right, you want me to figure it out? Yes. All right, S C three days, huh? Yes. S C three days, S C three days, 400 miles a day, 200 miles a day. <laughs> quiet, please, quiet. Yes, <laughs> A times 400 and um, carry Harry and um, <laughs> comes out 30 boats of sand. Well, Charlie? Uh, Charlie? Huh? Where are you? I'm still at sea. You're still at sea? Yes. <laughs> uh, B times A, 321 days and carry 49, so it's great for four. Well? Well, I'm afraid scurvy will set in before I get the answer. <laughs> yeah, I'm afraid <laughs> When we make out Dorothy Lamour's report card this week, she may get a very bad mark in spelling, but she's going to get 100% in rhythm. For to her, it's love with a capital U. Dottie, step up to the head of the class and explain. Uh -huh. 
you may spell love with a capital L, but I spell love with a capital U. Through the day you're away, and I'm open, open, mope, and you do too, I hope, I hope, I hope. All life through, love with a capital U. Would just lead me to a capital T I can spell just as well as the dictionaries do But I spell love with a capital U Go from A to Z, it's plain to see, the first word is the door, and in the alphabet, you can guess the love word you are looking for, and now we come to Z, where you can see, it's rather tough to start, so I'll explain this way, I looked at you one day, and sing with the strings of my heart, so all life through, love with a capital U, would just do me to a capital Just as well as the dictionaries do But I spell love with a capital U There's important information on the air today Information that means money to a great many people Last call, hurry up, every minute counts Start now if you're going to win that first prize of $2,500 or one of the 1,500 crisp new $5 bills in this easy contest. Your entry must be postmarked before midnight this Saturday. If you've already sent some entries, send more tomorrow. Think what you could do with that big prize money. Get a fine new car or start buying a home. And remember those 1,500 other prizes. Anyone in the United States can enter except Chase and Sanborn employees and their families. So tomorrow, tell us why you changed to Chase and Sanborn dated coffee. To be sure of delicious freshly roasted coffee, dated for your protection, or on account of our magnificent new silver package, winner of a national award is the finest of its kind, yet a money-saving package too. Perhaps you changed because we used this thrifty package instead of costly containers and passed the saving on to you. There are so many reasons for preferring dated coffee that more people have changed to it in recent years than to any other kind. Tomorrow, take a dated front from a new silver package of Chase and Sanborn coffee and write on the inside, I change to Chase and Sanborn coffee because... Then finish that statement in 25 words or less. Clearness, sincerity, and originality are what count. Address Chase and Sanborn, 420 Lexington Avenue. That's 420... Lexington Avenue, New York City. Remember, this is your last chance to win that $2,500. The contest closes at midnight, September 30th, this coming Saturday. Send your entry as soon as you buy your Chase and Sanborn dated coffee in the new silver package tomorrow. Among the younger and more charming actresses in Hollywood is Anita Louise, who is currently appearing in the RKO production, Reno. It is a very real pleasure to welcome Anita here this evening and to appear with her in an original dramatic sketch written by J. Douglas Cook. We present Anita Louise in The Enchantress. In 1935, Peter Carver, an American commercial artist, won a scholarship to study at the famed École Julienne in Paris. It is now October of that year, and Peter and his wife Anne have been in the French capital for almost six months. Six months of a gay bohemian life. 
six months of parties like the one which just broke up at their Latin Quarter studio. Anne is clearing away the wreckage. Hello, Peter. Hello, Anne. Well, did your party go off all right? Yes. Why didn't you come home in time? Why? It uh, never occurred to me that you'd want me. That's just it, Peter. It never occurred to you. Well, Peter, Robert just asked me to go Maxine's with him. I told him no. Oh, but why, Anne? It, it's all right if you... Because uh... I remembered a date we have. I remembered something else, too, Peter. Something that frightened me. Peter, we can't go on the way we have been. Oh, Anne, we've been all over this. We agreed yes, that, that Peter, we... Yes, Peter, we agreed to be modern. To have as much fun, good, innocent fun as, could, as we could have during our year's stay in Paris. But that's all we agreed upon. We didn't agree to ruin our marriage or destroy all our plans with people and parties that don't matter. Oh, Anne, you're making a scene for no reason at all. Peter, look out the window. What? Oh. Oh, it's pretty, isn't it? The myriad lights of the city twinkling out of the gathering darkness. Yes, Peter. That's what's wrong with us. It's Paris, the enchantress, with a flower in her hair. Do you remember, Peter? Remember? Remember what? That's what we were warned against. That out there. Paris. You do remember? No, I don't. Who warned us? Monsieur Tessier, Peter. And here's the date I remembered. He's coming here tonight. Well, that's unfortunate because I'm not going to be here. Oh, Peter, you can't go out. Anne, I don't know what's come over you. I never heard of him, Monsieur Tessier, and I'm certainly not going to break a date on his account. Of course you've heard of him, Peter. The old gentleman we met the first time we went to the Café de Lille. It's when we first came to Paris. Remember? We've been reading the guide. And Peter, oh darling, look at this. The guidebook says that Picasso and, and de Vivier come here from time to time, even today. De Vivier? Oh, the greatest living painter. Oh, gosh, I'd like to see him. I'll be famous someday. Maybe. Peter, you're almost famous now, winning that scholarship and prize. Oh, no, Ann, I'm only a commercial artist. But I'm going to work hard this year, and maybe one day I'll... Well, I'll be more than just a commercial artist. Of course you will, darling. Oh, Peter, isn't it wonderful being here in Paris together? I never dreamt it would be so beautiful. Oh, and uh, we'll prowl around and discover Paris together. All the famous, beautiful places. I wonder if Paris would be half as beautiful without you, Anne. Why, Peter, that's about the nicest thing you've ever said. Pardon. Bonsoir, Monsieur Edan. Oh, uh... Well, uh, good evening, sir. You will pardon me for being so bold, hmm? but uh, might I have the honor of doing Madame's portrait? My portrait? Oh, you're, uh, you're, you're an artist, sir? <laughs> Some critics are kind enough to say so, yes. Yeah. Well, I, I hope someday they may be as kind to me. And I are with you, young man. But do be careful. Careful, sir? I have seen a great many young men come to France to study full of talent and hope and ambition. And, well, they seem to disappear somewhere. Oh, but Paris offers so much for art students. Mm. Paris is deceitful. Paris is an enchantress. She fascinates and she calls. She offers everything for every taste and kind. People always find what they look for. Well, we, want, we know what we're looking for. I'm quite sure of that, young man. Oh, but come, I, I did not approach you to warn you of Paris. <laughs> Madame, there is something in your face, something of your love, perhaps, but it's something fundamental in all of us. A verity, if you will. I, I should like to paint that. A verity? Uh, can you paint an abstraction? Well, what do you paint, young man? Why, uh... Well, just just what I see. That that building over there, or or that, that woman sitting at the table. Is that all? Well, what what else is there? <laughs> that is not easy to say. It, uh, it is what the artist tries to express, the the truth behind what one sees. The truth behind what one sees. Gee, uh, I, I wonder if that's what Duvivier gets into his work. You, uh, you like the VBS work, eh? 
Well, don't you? Well, some of it, some of it, yes. Uh, but uh, what about sitting for me, madame? I, I will try to do something fine of you. Oh, I'd love to. I could start tomorrow, couldn't I, Peter? Well, my dear, tomorrow I leave for Crave, but uh, I shall return to Paris the 1st of October. Oh, well, that's five months from now. Oh, you will not be here. Oh, yes, the whole year. Bon, bon, I, uh, I shall look forward to painting you, madame. Uh, here's my card, monsieur. Oh, thank you. Uh, here, here's mine. No. We live at number nine Rue Boissonade. We took a studio there yesterday. I will come there, my dear. Oh, and uh, now I see my old friend has arrived. Uh, we meet here occasionally because... Well, uh, we did so when we were very young. Au revoir, au revoir, monsieur. Goodbye, Bye, goodbye, sir. sir. Oh, Peter, what a dear old man. I wonder what he meant. The truth back of what one sees. What's his name, Peter? Oh, oh, let's see, uh, Tessier. Monsieur Jacques Tessier. Jacques Tessier, oh yes, I remember. He's no artist. No one ever heard of him. But Peter... And he won't remember to come here after five months. Well, we did. Well, I can't help it. I've, I've made other arrangements. What, Peter? Oh, it's a uh, studio party. Uh, De Vivia might be there. De Vivia, De Vivia. You've been saying that for months. And we agreed that, that we'd... Peter, we'd... it was wrong to agree to anything that threatens to jeopardize our happiness together. Well, I, I've got to go now. We'll talk about it tomorrow. Okay, Peter. That's the way you want it. Come in. Oh, how do you do? Come in. Good evening, my dear. Oh, you, you're going out, Monsieur Carver. Well, uh, no, 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 I, I, I just came in. Uh, gee, I, I didn't think you'd remember to come. Remember? Well, I promised. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, uh, please sit down, won't you? Well, Did you have a pleasant summer? Oh, yes, yes, very, very. But, uh... I still wish to do your portrait. Oh, I'm so glad. Shall you be free to start sitting by uh, Wednesday? Wednesday? Why, yes, Monsieur Tessier. Monsieur Tessier? No. Isn't that your name? Why, no, my well, name is... Well, this is the card you gave me at the cafe the night we met. Huh? It is? <laughs> why, Lord, why, why, this is the card of, of the young man who packed and shipped my painting kit to Gravy. I, uh... I'm a little absent-minded at times, I suppose. Well, uh, uh, I guess we all are. Uh, well, what is your name, uh, sir? De Vivier. De Vivier? Not Jacques de Vivier. Hey, I, I think so. Uh, oh, uh, what does this mean? It's oh. Uh, <laughs> well, well, just, uh, just oof. Oh. Well, you see, Monsieur de Vivier, you've always been rather an idol of my husband's. Vraiment, well. How kind of you to say so. Uh, monsieur, may, may, may I come to the studio uh, sometimes while, while you're painting my wife's portrait? Well, uh, I do not as a rule uh, paint for audience, but uh, I might make an exception in your case. Huh? <laughs> Honey, did, did you hear? Yes, darling, I heard every word. Well, uh, if you will excuse me, I will go now. But I should look forward to Wednesday. Um, here is my card. Thank you. Uh, what does it say? I, I'd better make sure this time. <laughs> this one is yours, Monsieur de Vivier. Very well. Goodbye, my dear. Goodbye, young man. Wednesday about ten, eh? Yes. Goodbye. Good night, monsieur. Good night, good night, sir. We'll, we'll be there. Darling. Yes, Peter? We have been different, haven't we? Different? You and I. We haven't been the people who came to Paris six months ago. In love and happy. And ready to lick the world together. Oh, Anne, darling, I... I see now what you were trying to make me see. I've been blind. No. Stupid. No, not just you, Peter. Both of us. I was a fool to lose sight of... of the truth back of... Anne... I know what he means. And I, I... I... I know, but... But I, I... I can't put it into words. I understand, Peter. Oh, Anne. Anne, darling. Yes, Peter. Anne, let's go over to the Café de Lille for... for a little supper. Just you and I. Yes, darling. Just you and I.
This is Don Amici and the Chase and Sanborn Hour continues. The romantic adventures of the fabled Don Juan has proven an inspiration for more than one author. Among them, Tolstoy, whose lyrical poem was set to music by Tchaikovsky. And the result of this collaboration of the greats was the beautiful Don Juan serenade Nelson Eddy sings. <laughs> Such a day is upon us. Probably no one in Hollywood can claim a finer record, both in comedy and drama, than our Mr. Niven. And from what we hear of his current work in raffles over on the Goldwyn lot, that record is being well maintained. So it's a real pleasure to extend our heartiest greetings to the gentleman himself, David Pride of the Nivens. Well, thank you, Don. Oh, that's all right. Don't mention it. Don, that really was plenty. We must meet more often. Oh, you liked what I said about you, did you? I, I've never been so impressed in my life. Would you like to run through it again? No? <laughs> Just an idea. David, I, uh, I haven't had a chance to tell you how much I liked your work in Bachelor Mother. Well, Don, thank you. Oh, I thought you were splendid in Hollywood Cavalcade. Oh, you did, huh? Yes. Well, not that it matters, but Hollywood Cavalcade hasn't even been released yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I just thought it'd be nice to spread a give and take, you know. Keep, yeah. the, ball, <laughs> keep the ball rolling. <laughs> well, the only difference is that I have seen Bachelor Mother. Oh, so have I. I go practically every night, as a matter of fact. <laughs> you know, Don, in every actor's life, if he has the usual amount of ham in him, I think there must be milestones. For instance, the first time you see your name on the screen, the first time you'll see your name in lights, and the first time you see it... Starred above a picture. Oh. Well, anyway, that happened to me about a month ago. There it was, Ginger Rogers and David Niven in Bachelor Mother. Well, the first thing I did, of course, was to buy a little camera, and I spent a very happy day going around taking pictures of all the billboards. <laughs> had, them, 
<laughs> Rather a tricky time keeping Ginger's name out of focus, but I took care of that. <laughs> uh, then one day, a really awful thing happened. I had some friends down from Canada, and I was taking them out to dinner. So to impress them, I drove about ten miles out of the way and went right down past the RKO Studios, because I knew that the whole side of the thing was plastered with these billboards with Niven on them, and I just said, of course, I make a picture there, and I can fit in the time. <laughs> they were pretty impressed so far, but while we were having dinner, this awful thing occurred. The most enormous woman I have ever seen in my life surged up to the table. She was rather like, a, like the covered wagon in the distance, and came up and... She said, oh, you're my favorite. I got all your pictures. I think you're wonderful. I said, oh, thank you, my little tot. <laughs> said, um, whispered to my friends, take no notice, this happens all the time, just, just go right on. She said, no, honestly, you're wonderful, you're marvelous, I follow you, you're, you're amazing. I said, oh, oh, thank you. She said, I had to ask you to do something I've never asked an actor to do before. I want you to write your name in my hat. <laughs> then she whipped off one of those new things that apparently is made of a lot of holes tied together with bits of string. Somewhere I found the lining and I proceeded to write my name in sort of old English lettering. I was determined to do the thing up really properly for a friend still impressed. She took the hat and she said, Oh, thank you, Mr. Karloff. <laughs> <laughs> well, she was probably a little nearsighted, David. I wouldn't worry about it. Well, I was a little shaken, Don. I was trying so hard to impress my friends, especially one of them, a retired British judge and somebody well worth impressing. But a judge no longer, huh? Not of human beings, Don, no, but he rather fancies himself as a judge of horse flesh. You go to almost any lengths to get a horse, and at times he gets into rather a mess and difficulties doing this. I remember one time in London, he wanted to buy a horse, and he went to a livery stable, and he said, I want a little trotter. I want a good-looking little horse with good manners, good action, good teeth, and all, everything good. But above all, he must be very, very fast indeed. The groom said, I've got the perfect animal for you, sir. Very farm material, lovely bit of horse flesh, lovely. The judge said, yes, that, that is nice. Look the horse over, wonderful. But how do I know he's fast? Fast, said the groom. I'll tell you what we'll do. If you start from London tonight at 12, I'll guarantee he'll have you in Southampton at 3 o'clock in the morning. How's that? Well, that, that, that sounds very swift, very, very speedy indeed, said the judge. I'll go away and think it over. A week later, he came back and the groom said, well, sir, made up your mind? Yes, I'm, I'm afraid I, I can't take the horse. Can't take it, so why not? Well, there's nothing the matter with the beast. It, it just, what on earth am I going to do at Southampton at three in the morning? <laughs> David, your friend sounds like quite a character. That, that went awfully well. I hope to do the next one better. <laughs> <laughs> well, Donnie he is, and in more ways than one. I remember one night, I had dinner at his place, and after dinner... We were having coffee in his trophy room. He's done a lot of this big game stuff in his time. And the walls are completely covered with heads of animals, all glaring at each other. And whenever I looked, I saw rows of teeth and great gaping jaws and maws and everything. Oh, everything had its mouth open, even the butler. <laughs> General effect after a few minutes in that room is you started doing the same thing. Started going your sure mouth open and yawn. <laughs> well, the old man was telling me a long story, and he said... Uh, we were out on Shikari in the Cascada Desert and the mumbo-jumbo's in full flood and suddenly I, a huge lion crashed out of the alfalfa or something and I yelled to my beaters, Tandaranda Poparandini Sudendi, which means halt. <laughs> then I, I, I picked up my fowling piece, you see, and started ramming nails and things in the end. I... And, he, and he went to sleep, Don right sat in the middle of the story. There I was, left standing beside the chair, and I didn't want to be rude, so I stood there for about an hour and ten minutes, and finally decided to wake him up. I trod on his foot, and I said, well, what happened then, sir? He said, what? Who? Who? What? 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 Hmm? I said, well, what happened at the end of the story? He said, oh, yes, I, I kissed the girl, that's it. <laughs> With Tin Pan Alley turning out catchy new tunes every day and current song hits chasing each other to the top of popularity polls, it's pleasant once in a while to turn back to the melodies we hummed a few years ago. Melodies like Irving Berlin's Lady of the Evening, which I'd like to sing for you. Ah. 
After the gray of a long dreary day comes the evening. Peaceful and calm as a sheltering palm is the evening. Daytime has gone to rest there in the golden world. Soon little stars will appear in the sky, seeming to say we are here under Evening, lady of the evening, I can hear you call, dear. Falling while the shades are falling, falling over land and sea. You can make the cares and troubles that followed me through the day fold their tents just like the Arabs and silently steal away. Evening, lady of the evening, I hear you calling me. man a map of buried treasure and he'll start looking for that fortune. Well, here's how to find the treasure nearer home. Yes, this is going to lead someone straight to a prize of $2,500 cash. And it may be you if you hurry. 1,500 other people get $5 apiece. But midnight this coming Saturday is the deadline. This is the last call on the contest. Your last chance. Surely you want one of those crisp new $5 bills. Or the $2,500 to start building a home, pay all your bills, or spend as you please. So act now. Tomorrow, take a dated front from the new silver package of Chase and Sanborn dated coffee, and write on the inside, I changed to Chase and Sanborn coffee because... Then finish that sentence in 25 words or less. Your reason may be worth $2,500 to you. Duplicate prizes in case of ties. All entries become Chase and Sanborn's property. The decision of our judges is final. What won you over to Chase and Sanborn dated coffee? The magnificent new silver package awarded a medal as the finest of its kind? The fact that we use this economical package instead of costly containers and pass the saving on to you? The dating system that assures you a freshly roasted coffee? There are so many reasons for preferring dated coffee that more people have changed to it in recent years than to any other kind. So this contest is easy. Send as many entries as you like each on the inside of a separate dated silver package front. Mail them to Chase and Sanborn, 420 Lexington Avenue. That's 420 Lexington Avenue, New York City. But hurry, your entries must be postmarked before midnight, September 30th. Go after that $2,500 tomorrow. <laughs> Charles McCarthy presents himself in, in a play presented by special permission of the... Nobody, nobody special. I've been on that time. 
in a little dramatic playlet of the Parisian art colony entitled The Latin Quarter or Who's Got Change for Two Bits. From the stereoptic and slide of the same name, paint a horrible scene, Bannon. As our scene opens, Charlie McCarthy, a rising young artist... Artiste, please. Oh, yes, artiste, is busily at work in his studio. His wife, Madeline... Madeline. Oh, Madeline, played by Anita Louise, enters. Curtain? Curtain. Order. Oh, Pierre, my pear. Yes, my grapefruit. Are you almost through painting, dear? Just a few more strokes of the brush. Ah, ah. There, that does it. Oh, it's a work of art. Mm. Pierre, you are a genius. Ah, my petite cabbage head, yes. As soon as I get some more calcimine, I'll do the kitchen. <laughs> Which one of us shall answer the phone, dear? Uh, you better, Pierre. After all, it's a French phone, and you're the only one who speaks it. Oh, that's right, dear. Hello? Oui? Oui? Oui, oui? Tray, tray? Paradise, uh... <laughs> Hello? Yeah. Uh, who was it, Pierre? I have good news. It's a commission for a painting. Oh, I'm so happy. Who from? Uh, Monsieur Chase and a Monsieur Sanborn. They want me to paint a date on a package. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Pierre, I think you have the makings of another goatee. You mean Van Dyke, dear? <laughs> no, no. Well, anyway, what did Van Dyke have that you haven't got? Room rent for one thing. <laughs> Goatee for another. Nah. Oh. <laughs> Hello? What's the meaning of this? I wish a conversation with you. Well, why didn't you come through the door? Ah, oh, monsieur, I'm a French man. I come in through the French windows. <laughs> that sounds logical. <laughs> Now, what do you want? Ah, my friend, I have good news for you. I have come to share your apartment with you, but I have no intention of paying you rent for it. Well, that's nice. <laughs> that saves me the embarrassment of asking for it, doesn't it? You see, monsieur, I am, as they say in America, behind the seven ball. Uh-huh. <laughs> you mean the eight ball? No, 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 I cannot afford that. I see. <laughs> well, I will give you this painting of mine, this piece of master. Yes, sir, sir. What is it? It is a genuine crisis of France. My, my. <laughs> Rackety Rex and Dinky Die. What's the name of it? It is Whistler's Mother-in-Law. <laughs> the entire canvas she was done with a pallet knife. I thought you sat on it before it was dry. <laughs> Hello, 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 hello. <coughs> and all that sort of thing. <laughs> Who are you, Armbruster? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm thinking of moving into your apartment, uh, so let me introduce myself. I am Armand Armbruster. Uh, how utterly utter. We'll both live in the gutter. Oh, are you a poet too? No, I star at painting. So you're a poet, eh? Oh, deucedly so. Yes. Would you care to hear one of my effusions? Would I? <laughs> no, but go ahead. This one is entitled To My Canine. <clears throat> canine is a dog, you know. Yes, I know, you canine poet. <laughs> my dog is the best friend a man ever had. Uh-huh. He's sweet when he's good. He's cute when he's bad. <laughs> As I watch him lie upon my rug, I know that I love him, Ronald, my dog, like it. <laughs> like it? Get out of here. <laughs> I have another entitled the Tempus Fugits, shall I? <laughs> you mean go? No, recite. All right. Bong, bong, bong. And bong, bong, bong. Six o'clock, like it. Well, it's timely. And now... And now shut up and get out of here. Traffic's heavy here tonight, isn't it? I want to see Pierre McCarthy, the artist. You're speaking to the master himself. Oh, are you the squirt? Yeah, that's me. 
I heard you was looking for a model. Yeah, I am. Have you ever posed before? Yeah, a lot of times. Gee, that's good, ain't it? You're the prettiest model I've ever had. Oh, thanks. Who else have you had? Well, yesterday I had an old flower pot and a French tomato. <laughs> I must say, you're quite an improvement. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Now, report tomorrow, and we'll do a full-length profile. <laughs> So, uh, a white neck would be awfully nice and in order. I get it. I'll wash. Okay. Well, so long. See you tomorrow. <laughs> what a dope. She's pretty, though. Oh, excuse me, but which side of my neck are you going to use? Uh, the left side. Thanks. I didn't want to wash the wrong side. <laughs> Sorry, pal. The joint's full. <laughs> Can't keep them out of here, huh? Uh, you're McCarthy, the painter, I presume? You certainly do. My name is Niven. Niven? Say, you look like Niven, the art connoisseur. Any relation to Niven, the art connoisseur? I am Niven, the art connoisseur. Oh, that's funny. I could swear there was a resemblance. Well, <laughs> uh, just one of those things you can't explain. Yeah. I would uh, like to look at some of your canvases. Oh, yes, yes. Something in a medium-priced pup tent? <laughs> No, I mean your paintings. Oh, yes, of course, of course, painting, yes. Well, now, there's one over there that I haven't been able to sell for years. <laughs> Say, that's an excellent canvas. Yes, it is, really. It's a still life, you know. Still life, yes. Haven't been able to move it. <laughs> I call it uh, Pickles at Rest. <laughs> an amazing likeness. What color? What flavor, yes. So lifelike. Yes, they almost make you pucker, don't they? <laughs> They look like live pickles. Yeah. What did you use for color? Burnt umber or raw umber? No, cuke umber. <laughs> I, uh, I could be interested in the purchase of that one there. What do you call it? Oh, that's it. Uh, that one. Uh, that's a gem. That's a gem, really. That's Paul Revere's Midnight Ride. But, my dear sir, you have him riding a bicycle. Yes, I know. You see, I can't paint horses. <laughs> Oh, how quaint, how quaint. Yeah, Tell me, yeah. uh, have you done anything in the cubistic or the surrealistic? Yes, I have a horrible thing over there. I call it a uh, couch reclining on a man. <laughs> couch reclining on a man? Yes, inspired by the painting uh, Bath Taking a Woman. Out we let up here, long so. Long so. <laughs> Nelson Eddy sings Sir Arthur Sullivan's somber and strangely moving composition, The Lost Chord. Oh, 
Another Chase and Sanborn hour for all the many good friends of Chase and Sanborn coffee. And speaking of coffee, we have some startling statistics. Our private investigations reveal that Dorothy L'Amour takes three lumps of sugar in her coffee, Nelson Eddy is a man who goes for lots of cream, Robert Arm Brewster drinks it black, and I'm a guy who likes it with sugar or without with cream or black. But with all these individual schools of thought, we do agree on one thing. We believe that our Chase and Sanborn coffee is the best there is. And we're glad that you agree with us. We'll all be back next week. Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy, Nelson Eddy, Dorothy Damore, and Robert Armbruster and the Chase and Sanborn Orchestra. Our special guests will be Constance Bennett and Edward Everett Horton. Until then, this is yours sincerely, Don Amici, saying au revoir. Don't forget the cities of New York and San Francisco are making it easy and pleasant for you to visit their two great fairs. In both cities, accommodations for visitors are splendid and reasonably priced, and there's a hearty welcome awaiting you. At the fairs themselves, don't miss the special Chase and Sanborn attractions. At San Francisco Golden Gate Exposition, visit our colorful house of hospitality. In New York, see the magnificent Standard Brands building featuring our great outdoor marionette show with puppets of Edgar Bergen, Charlie McCarthy, Don Amici, and Dorothy L'Amour. It's fun, it's free, and you're always welcome. Next week, another big Chase and Sanborn hour. Constance Bennett, Edward Everett Horton, Don Amici, Edgar Bergen, Charlie McCarthy, Nelson Eddy, Dorothy Lamour, and Robert Armbruster in the Chase and Sanborn Orchestra. Heard on this program were Lady of the Evening from the Music Box Reviews and the Big Show by Jerome Kern. This is Jim Bannon speaking for the makers of Chase and Sanborn Coffee. This is the National Broadcasting Company.